Welcome to worship. We are happy to have this time together to praise our God together. We invite you to let us know that you're here worshiping with us. Put a comment below and you could even add a prayer request later on in the service. You're going to want to stand up for this one. Come on, let's stand up. You will never run away, you're forever mine. You will never run away, you're by my side. Hey! settle into this service, I invite you to take time to lift up whatever it is that's on your heart to God. So we'll take a moment of silent confession as we ready ourselves for worship. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful to worship you today. We ask that whatever is on our hearts, whatever is going on in our world and those around us, God, I ask that you would send down your spirit, uh, one of peace, one of comfort, one of hope in the midst of emotions and everything else. Uh, we just are grateful for this time to come as we are and worship you. It's your name that we pray. Amen. I 
was a stranger knocking at your door you took me in with no questions and no conditions when i was a sinner running from your grace you called me friend you called me friend cause there are no outsiders to Tossed upon the waves, you calm the storm. You are the Father. Kids gather around, it's time for the children's message with Deacon Julie. Today, I want you to think about your closest friend. What do you like about that friend? It's really important for us to encourage our friends, which is something that we might see in our Bible story today. It takes place in the Old Testament, and we're going to read about two good friends. Their names are Elijah and Elisha. And at that time, there were kings who ruled over God's people. And a few of the kings followed God, but unfortunately, most of them didn't. And since they didn't listen to God, the kingdom didn't do so well. It started to fall apart. But God still loved God's people. He cared about them so much that he sent prophets, or people who spoke to everyone and shared God's word with them. Elijah was one of those prophets. And Pastor Mary's going to help us learn more about these friends in just a few minutes, so I, I hope you'll pay attention. 
Because when we learn more about this friendship between Elijah and Elisha, we can see that they were always there for each other. They went through a lot together, but no matter what happened, they were there to encourage each other along the way. Because that's what friends do. When we encourage our friends, we can share God's love in a really big way. You never know who might need a kind word from you. What if we all took some time to say, hey, I know you can do this, or God is with you, or remember, I'll always be your friend. And the really great news is that we don't have to do this alone. When we believe and when we put our faith in Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, and the Spirit encourages us and gives us the power to encourage other people. There's so many ways that you can encourage someone, so use your imagination and be creative. Maybe you have friends who are nervous about the upcoming school year. Think about how you can encourage them right now. If you notice that one of your friends is upset, you don't have to know the perfect words to say. Sit with them, hang out with them, just let them know that you're there for them no matter what. So, let's be encouragers. Let's be there for each other. Let's pray for each other. Dear God, Thank you for showing us what friendship looks like through the story of Elijah and Elisha. Please help us to be encouragers. Help us to see how we can share a kind word or stand up for someone who's going through something tough. Thank you for showing us what true friendship is all about. We love you, God. Amen. Are you tired? Are you fatigued from having to reconfigure and recalibrate your life and your work and your family over these last five months? And now we're getting ready to launch into a whole nother season with new uncertainties and that recalibrating is going to have to start all over again. Are you tired? Are you sick of carrying the weight of reinventing your life right now? Or maybe you're someone who has been able to be removed from some of the chaos of COVID and you have not had to recalibrate your life. But I bet you know seasons of exhaustion, seasons where you just didn't know how to keep going anymore. Today we meet a man from the Bible, from the Old Testament, a prophet named Elijah. He was a man that was in a season of pushing hard. He was working for God. He was trying to defend God. He was really trying to make God's name known. And yet, all it got him was running from people who were trying to kill him. And he was tired. He was fatigued. He went hiding out on a mountain in a cave. And God said, what are you doing here? in 1 Kings chapter 19. And Elijah said, look, I have been very zealous for you. I have been passionately serving you, God. And yet, all these other people are forgetting you. They're destroying your altars. They are worshiping other gods. I alone am left. And God said, come out of that cave onto the mountain. I have a word to share with you. So Elijah went out onto the mountain and first, there was a huge wind that came, and it said that it was a wind so strong that it could break rock. But God didn't say a word in the wind. Then God sent an earthquake, and again, God did not speak. Then God sent fire, and yet God did not speak. Then there was the sound of sheer silence, and God did not speak. And then finally, God said, what are you doing out here? And again, all of that show of power that God had shown him didn't make an impression at all. And all Elijah could say was, look, God, I've been really passionate for you. I've been serving you. I've been doing everything right. And yet people are forgetting about you and they're destroying your altars and they're worshiping other gods and I alone am left. So God could see that that first plan of showing God's awesome power didn't work for Elijah. So he gave Elijah a different kind of remedy. He said, Elijah, I have a job for you. I would like you to be a mentor. I would like you to find a man called Elisha and become his mentor. 
God saw that Elijah was stuck. He had let his passion for service turn into self-pity. He'd worked so hard, and yet all it got him was people seeking his life. So how is God's remedy helpful to Elijah? How is God's plan of giving Elijah more work, of finding someone to mentor, able to help him in this season of fatigue and exhaustion? I think God saw that rest wasn't what Elijah needed in that moment. Sometimes it is. Sometimes we need to get away, be on our own, recharge our batteries. But God could see that Elijah was just stuck in a bad pattern. He was nursing his wounds. He was just spending time being in pain, and that pain was feeding on itself. And he was in this pity and cycle of destruction, and it wasn't going to get better for him. So God had to replace that self-pity with a purpose. God's plan was so helpful in three ways. First, he was able to channel his energy into his passion, which was letting people know about God. God gave him that purpose. Second, God's plan was helpful for Elijah in that it gave him long-term someone to share the weight of his work with. He didn't have to carry it all alone. Yes, having someone to mentor is a lot of work, but you also eventually are sharing that work. And the third reason that God's plan was so helpful is that God was giving Elijah a way to share a legacy, to build a legacy, to pour into someone else that passion he had for serving God. Today, we are starting a three-week series where we're going to be looking at three different pairs of people from the Bible to see what we can learn from them and to see how God worked through them. Today, we are looking at the prophet Elijah and the prophet Elisha. Now, yes, those names sound very much alike, and maybe you haven't heard of them before, or maybe you've heard of them, but you thought they were just the same guy, because Elijah sounds a lot like Elisha. And some people kind of blur them together and say Elijah, and so you get the sh and the j. But these two men were men that God worked through in powerful ways. And if you are in a season of exhaustion, you might learn something from them too. And you might see how God is working through you. So I already told you about Elijah, the guy that was hiding in the cave in a mountain, and he was tired. His name means God is my Lord. Now that Eli at the beginning of his name, that's the word that means God. And when his name is Elijah, it means God is my Lord, not any other God, not any handmade idol, not anything else that people can worship. He is saying, God is my Lord. God is the one that I serve. When Elijah got stuck, he couldn't see God anymore. He only saw his own self-pity. He saw how he had tried hard, but nobody appreciated him. And when God sent him out to mentor Elisha, he was able to connect with his purpose again. So we will be meeting Elisha. Elijah was sent out to him, and Elisha's name means God is my salvation. It has that same Eli at the beginning for God, but then the last part means my salvation. And in this passage, this part of the scripture, Elisha learns that God really is his salvation and not anything else. And it's Elijah who helps teach him that. Now we meet Elisha. I'm paraphrasing a whole passage of the book of First Kings. So you can go and read First Kings on your own. It's not too long if you want to read in depth about these two men. But the way that we meet Elisha is he is plowing a field. He is behind, it says, 12 pairs of oxen. Now, the first thing that that tells us 
is that he came from a family that owned land and they owned and they were farmers and they had enough resources to buy 12 pairs of oxen. So in that day, they were actually doing very well for themselves. He was busy in the field doing his work and Elijah comes and Elijah throws his mantle over Elisha's shoulders. Now a mantle was like an animal skin that you wore over your shoulders and the animal fur was on the outside of it. And when Elisha receives this mantle over his shoulders, he knows that he is being called into something new. He is being called to become a prophet, someone who has a special relationship with God, someone who is called to speak words of truth to God's people. And he does something that I think is actually not practical and maybe not even great financially. But when he chooses to follow Elijah, it says that he takes the plow and his farm implements and he sets them all on fire. He burns them and he uses that fire to cook all of his oxen. And then he serves the meat from the oxen to the whole community of people. He gives them a huge feast. And then he tells Elijah, I'm ready to follow you. Now that seems crazy to me. If I were him, I would have probably just sold the farm equipment and sold the oxen because those things were probably very valuable. But he makes a big point. He makes the point that he is actually done with that other way of life and he is committing 100% to follow God by serving the prophet Elijah. So Elijah was the mentor and Elisha was the apprentice. Why are mentoring relationships so important? Not only in the Bible, but also right now. And especially right now, as we are going through this time of COVID and having to learn so many things, well, I think mentoring relationships are a gift from God. Mentoring is a gift to the mentor itself. I know people who have given up contributing or sharing their wisdom because they feel that they weren't ever really appreciated. And they go down a path of cynicism and self-pity and entitlement and despair that's the path that Elijah was on. He was on an unhealthy path. And so God had to give him a purpose. God called him to pour that passion, that wisdom, that experience he had into someone else so that he could still contribute, so that he could leave a legacy. Being a mentor is a gift, not just to the person who receives it, but to the person who gives that mentoring. But mentoring is also a gift to the apprentice, to the person who is in training, to the person who is learning. Because there is so much to learn in life. And the only way to gain experience is to gain experience. You only know what you know at any given moment. If you have the opportunity to learn from someone who's further down the path from you, you're able to experience yourself what, you're, what they're going through, and you're able to see it through your own eyes, and you're able to see it through the eyes of the person who is further down the road from you. That is a gift. Now, I want to share with you how Elisha follows Elijah and how he completes his mentorship training. Reading from 2 Kings chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. The older Elijah said to Elisha, stay here while I go on to Bethel. And he said, no, I am going to go with you. Then after that, Elijah said, now stay here. I'm going to go on to Jericho. And Elisha said, no, I'm coming with you. After that, they got to the Jordan River. And Elijah said, stay here. And Elisha said, no, I'm going with you. At that point, when they had crossed the Jordan, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. 
he responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I'm being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could see him no longer, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Elisha picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Elisha graduated from his internship program, from his apprenticeship program with the older Elijah. In this reading, it shows that Elijah, the mentor, thought that he could travel the last part of his journey on earth by himself, and he kept telling Elisha to stay back. But Elisha kept going with him. Elisha would not leave his side. And finally, Elijah asked, what can I give to you? And Elisha said, give me a double portion of your spirit. Now what Elisha was asking of the older Elijah was what a son, the oldest son, would ask a father for inheritance. The oldest son always received a double portion. But instead of asking for money or power, he was asking for a share of his spirit, of his wisdom. The older Elijah said, that's not me, that's not for me to decide. That's for God to decide. But if you see me when I am being taken from you, it will be given you. And Elisha does see Elijah as he is pulled into heaven on that chariot, pulled by horses up into heaven. And at that moment, Elijah's mantle falls down that skin that he wore around his shoulders, that animal skin. And Elisha picks it up and rolls it up just like he had seen Elijah do. And he strikes the water of the River Jordan and he evokes the name of God, the God that Elijah served. And when he does that, the water parts from one side into the other. Elisha fully lived into his internship fully lived into this mentorship program with the older Elijah. So I'm wondering for you, what do you need right now in this season as we are preparing for another school year, entering the season of fall? Are you tired? Are you fatigued? Could, could God be calling you to mentor someone as God called Elijah when Elijah was tired and fatigued? Or maybe you are the Elisha. Maybe you are hungry to learn and grow and experience more. Who could be your mentor during this season? And maybe even in the season of COVID, if you are looking for a mentor, they may not be older than you. They may be younger than you. Right now, we have all been leaning on technology in new ways. And maybe it's somebody who's younger than you, who's further down the road of technology, who could even help you live into the purpose that God has given you. Whether you are the mentor or the apprentice, this kind of relationship set up by God could be an opportunity for you to live into the name that God has given you. And that name is Child of God. Amen.
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Thanks for worshiping with us today, Good Shepherd. Know that we're grateful to journey alongside you and are continuing to pray for you in the days ahead. I'm actually outdoors at Horizon Middle School right now, lifting up prayers for our leaders and teachers, students and families as we journey toward fall here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. We invite you also to join in our next Leading the Conversation, which is taking place on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook and on demand anytime after that for a chance to hear the interview with Brandon Lunick, the superintendent for Moorhead Public Schools, and school board member Rachel Stone. Pastor Mary is gonna be leading them through an important conversation about their discernment and their plan and ways that we as people of faith uh, can join in the process in the days ahead of supporting our schools and our families. Uh, so we're grateful for that. And as we are making our way toward fall, we have a lot of really important stuff taking place at Good Shepherd. I invite you to go to knowthegoodshepherd.org to see our calendar and all sorts of important updates and events in the life of the church. But a few important ones to let you know of today are these. We actually have a brand new event that's gonna be taking place indoors at Good Shepherd in our sanctuary, and it begins on September 9th at 10 a.m. And it's gonna be called Morning Prayer. It's a chance for prayer and message, a chance to be in fellowship with each other and hear beautiful music that helps center us in the days ahead. And so we invite you to come to morning prayer at 10 a.m. beginning September 9th. We actually have a fun event taking place that evening as well called the GS Block Party that we invite all of our membership to come to. It's taking place outdoors in our parking lot. There will be food trucks available for meals. We'll have curbside communion. Kids that are in the GS Kids Church School and Confirmation programs uh, will be able to get their first month's lessons, and so we invite families to come out as well. And if it doesn't get any better than that, Red River Worship will be there to lead us in song out on the East Lawn as well. So bring a lawn chair, invite a friend, uh, come be the church with us. There will be other opportunities for us to worship online and outdoors in the days ahead as well. 
We'll continue to have our normal online worship services on Facebook Live and on demand at any time that works with your schedule. We're also kicking off our Sunday morning outdoor services on September 13th. We're having our outdoor drive-in services in our south lot, and we'll be having our 9 o'clock traditional and 10.30 contemporary services there. You can also join us the following week, September 20th at 4 p.m. at Oak Grove Lutheran School in Fargo for GS Downtown Fargo's outdoor service. Plenty of opportunities for us to lift up our songs to God and be in community from a safe distance. If you haven't yet, like this video, share it on your walls, and go to our website, knowthegoodshepherd.org. When you're there, you can help us be the church together. Fill out an online connection card at knowthegoodshepherd.org slash live. And if you're interested in giving a gift today uh, for our church to be able to live out our message and mission boldly in our community and beyond, you can go to knowthegoodshepherd.org slash giving and find out our ways to be able to give the tithe. You can give in a few ways as well. You can give like my family gives by texting GSFM to 77977. You can go to that website or you can go with the traditional way and send a check in to the church. However you give, however you serve, whatever you pray, know that we're grateful to be the church with you in the days ahead. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.